Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back to some more bite-sized business advice. We have an interesting episode lined up today, a topic that I think a lot of small business owners really don't want to talk about and don't even want to think about, and that is visibility or PR for your business. But more importantly than that, on a small business budget, which is probably the sector of this topic that nobody understands. I don't fully understand it either. So I'm excited to dive in with my guest. I have Bridget Cisco like disco is the way she <laughs> introduced it. herself to me. So <laughs> before we go any further, Bridget, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Brandon. I'm excited to yeah talk about this topic because most small business owners have no idea where to start, how this works, any of it. Yeah. So you are, you're a media expert. You're the co-founder. You have a business partner in your company, Visibility on Purpose. Um, you've, you've been doing this for a while. You're in this, you're in this neck of the woods, this industry, if you will. Um, I'm curious. I mean, when you say PR, I think a lot of people don't even understand what that means. They think like, I don't know, Kim Kardashian has a PR team. Like what, what does PR mean for small businesses? Yeah. And she does have a PR team. So PR is public relations and it's really how your brand is viewed in the public's perception. So many big companies have PR teams that help them with crisis communications, right? So we see like the tabloid magazines, but usually for a small business, like that's not what we're talking about. We're really talking about brand awareness. We're talking about media mentions. We're talking about getting featured in the media. And that's really our focus at Visibility on Purpose is helping that small business owner, you know, get their brand out there because likely they're doing all these really cool things and they just want more people to know about it. So you can think about this like a cousin to marketing and sales because all of them have similar goals, but usually different functions and ways that they actually hit that goal. Yeah, I was, I was going to say what came up for me is you always hear about branding and then you hear about marketing, which are definitely they're intertwined, but they're separate. PR kind of seems like the third leg to that stool, if you will. Am I am I on to something there or am I totally off track? Yeah, no, totally. And it's, it's really all about using other people's or in this case, like brands, audiences. So we usually think about this from the perspective of you as the founder being interviewed on TV, you being on podcast, because that's a way that you can share, you know, your brand, but also utilizing someone else's audience, as well as being mentioned in big, big publications or top tier media. Because in that way, it's not just you talking about your own business. It's usually you being seen as a credible expert on someone else's platform. So we usually look at it in that way. And what I've found is that most small business owners, they know a lot about like email marketing. They know a lot about social media because they like had to do it themselves from the ground up to start, but they usually don't know how they can actually bring their value and expertise to the media because they don't even know what that conversation would look like. Mm. Yeah. You had me until you said credible platform because I was like, oh, cool. You're practicing what you preach. You're you're on a podcast right now. And then credible platform is like, oh, that's too bad. Anyway, it's good to have you here, Bridget. Uh, <laughs> <You're> <laughs> I funny. joke, of course, but um, no, this that all makes sense. And what I like about it is the the key there is leveraging other people's audiences, whether that's TV, podcast, YouTube, social, whatever it is. The hardest thing that I found in business is growing your own audience, and to kind of, I hate to say shortcut it, but that's kind of what you're doing by leveraging other audiences, right? So. What are some of the ways you you start to work with people? Because you can't go like from idea to getting on a podcast or, or getting on like the nightly news. That's just not smart. So how do you kind of start working with people to get them ready to have some PR for their business? Yep. So I think a big thing that a lot of business owners are thinking or they don't even know much about is how the media works. And you can think of the media as a synergistic relationship between sources and experts, which would be, you know, me and you being able to talk on a topic and go to that media contact and say, hey, like, would you be willing to put out a story on this? And then it's the synergistic relationship between sources and then members of the media, like the writers and the producers, whether it's of a podcast show or whether it's a writer of a big magazine. And we have to always remember that they don't just want to interview you because you have a business. Like lots of people have businesses. That's not really their thought. So we always have to think about how can we, 
really harness our value in a unique way that adds value to whatever story, whatever segment, whatever, you know, TV show that they're putting out. And we have to think about, you know, that they want to think about their audience, their numbers, their listeners. So I always like to say, you know, we need to be able to think about how can we provide the value? So if you work with business owners or if you work in the financial field, maybe you want to be talking about, you know, interest rates. Maybe you want to be talking about ways to save money for college. And a lot of business owners don't really see the way that they can fit their expertise into what the media wants. So first step one is really figuring out what are some topics that you could speak on. And if you're writing content, if you're going onto podcasts, you probably already have those topics like nailed down. It's pretty easy. And then the other thing to think about is, you know, what media outlets are actually going to be helpful for my business. So if you're going to be featured in Forbes, if you're going to be featured in Entrepreneur, those are really all about trust and credibility. Whereas a smaller podcast or a bigger podcast is really great to move the needle for sales and to build a relationship with like, you know, the host themselves. Yeah. And that's all that's really great to have that foundation too, because then you can, you can do it at scale instead of just going one by one and thinking, Oh, what's my topic going to be for this story, this podcast, this blog, whatever. Um, if you have those common themes that you can revisit, you also, the, the side effect and benefit of that is be, you become known as the expert around that thing. Exactly. So uh, what I'm not saying, however, cause you've heard me say this on this podcast and on my social media is I'm not saying niche down. Uh, you can you can serve a, a broad range of clients, but what you speak about to the public, you need to have a couple of messages that people just associate you with as the expert um, and get on shows about that stuff. So, all right, let's we have that. Let's say we have that. Um, our clients have it. You, your clients have it. Step two would then be reaching out to these these places, these outlets, whether it's again TV, podcast, whatever. And this is where I see people kind of drop the ball. Um, I, as the, the host of a show who's receiving these applications, a lot of times, um, I see the good and I see the bad and by no means is this like uh, channel four news. That's probably getting millions of submissions, but <laughs> I still one see, day. yeah, maybe one day we'll see. Uh, we are very highly ranked in New Zealand. So shout out to you Kiwis. We love you. Um, but yeah, so what, do you, what are some best practices and also identifying like the right shows for you? Because I think people want to be on the nightly news, but they don't need to be. That's That wouldn't yeah. serve you as a small business. So kind of two angles. What's the best practice? And then how do you identify those places? Yeah. So best practices here, we always recommend having some sort of intro pitch that really introduces who you are and the value you can provide. Not from the angle of, oh, like interview me, interview me. I'm so cool. Blah, blah, blah. More from the angle of like, here, here's what I see you already talking about. And this is where, you know, a second point to this is understanding what kind of content they're already putting out. I'm, I'm sure, Brandon, if you get pitches where the person's listening to your show and they're like, hey, love that episode with like, you know, Brad, who talked about, um, you know, best tech tools for like startup founders. And they say that in their pitch. You're like, oh, OK, like they're already kind of part of the network. They're part of the community. They're already listening. So personalization is huge here. Highlighting value in the pitch is the second biggest thing here. And we do not want this to sound like a generic AI pitch. And we interview a lot of writers on our own podcast of big publications, and they actually have lots of tech softwares that's, you know, eliminating those AI pitches right away. So you need to be human here, um, which might take a little bit more time to put a human element into it, but it's going to go way further in the long run because you can actually tell someone's personality and just a little bit more about like how they present themselves. So that would be a little bit of like how to actually reach out. You do need to do some research for contacts, but there are incredible platforms nowadays. I'm sure you're familiar with Harrow. Or yes. maybe you've heard of it. So that's that one's changing a lot. Um, we have uh, a great connection with the friends over at quoted.com. So Q W O T E D free to sign up. Like that's a great way to start to build some of those relationships and see what the media is actually putting out content on. And there is a research piece, piece of that, which is like a conversation for a different day. But the second part of your question, which is like, what is the best for my company? And I think you need to ask yourself, like, who do I want to be seen around? What kind of publications would be helpful for my business? Do I want to be on the news? And like very, we're very honest that the news might not get you a million sales tomorrow. It might help you, 
with brand credibility and trust so that the people who've already been in your network then see, okay, they are an expert and they talk about this, they are known as this, which then has a compounded ripple effect. But you need to be thinking about what are your long-term goals and what's important for you. For some business owners, it's really important for them to have those shiny logos like on their website because they're getting a lot of traffic there already and they want that credibility. For others, podcasts are like the microwave method, right? Because you actually get to like be human. You get to talk about your story. You get to share value. So I think it's really dependent on the type of business and what goals that you have long-term and short-term. Yeah, that's really good advice. I Obviously, I'm kind of biased to the, the podcast thing, but I, I quite frankly only stumbled upon this in the middle of last year. So we'll, for context, middle of 2023, that this was even like a viable platform to uh, get visibility and even convert that into sales. Um, not for me as the host, but me and my business partner, we get on, we are guests on other podcasts. That's part of our marketing strategy. And the one thing that really surprised me was you can put up as many social media posts you want every single day. They, they only live for a very short period of time, depending on the platform, anywhere from 15 minutes to 48 hours. You have to keep pumping out content. We are consistently booking sales calls from interviews we had in like October, November, January, and these things live forever. And just a side benefit, I don't know why, but they rank very highly for your SEO. So if you're on like a number of different podcasts, your website is now an authority in the space on that topic just because you went on an interview. So. I don't know how, how do you leverage podcasts for your clients, Bridget? I'm, I'm curious because that's obviously one little like niche of the marketplace, but it seems like it's really growing. I'm, I'm a big, big podcast fan. I mean, podcasts are all about relationship building. And I think the reason that they do so well to convert is because people actually get to know you and they see the real human. They, and then when they hear your voice and they see you, it becomes more real. And I think this has to do with like the age of social media and just put excuse me, putting a post up there and like, you know, going away, but they can't actually talk to you. So it allows this audience to feel like they know you. And I'm like a, I'm a devout podcast listener, like any walk, any car ride, like I'm listening to some of my favorite podcasts and I feel like I know those hosts. So if they put on events, if they bring on guests, I'm more likely to trust them. So podcasts as a strategy, especially to guest on is really about building that relationship with the host because, Hey, they know a lot of people because they've interviewed a shit ton of people, which is like, absolutely incredible. And then it's really about giving your that audience a way to get in contact with you, right? So you're always thinking about what is the customer journey? Where can I have someone start? So just like for this, you know, we're giving everyone a PR starter kit. And it's like everything they need to know about like starting in the media, what they need to have, what kind of websites, um, what kind of photography, bios, like just a little media pack to get them ready to start. We talk about some of the best platforms that they can use because a big question is like no one knows what's even out there so we give the guest or we give the audience this like next step into our world and that's how they convert right i'm sure when you and your co-founder go on these shows you're just you're talking you're sharing value you're sharing like what you naturally know you tell the audience a way to get in contact with you maybe they join your email list maybe they follow you on socials and then it just becomes that ripple effect because they're one step closer to you and podcasts just do that really well and i think it's because of this human element yeah it, it's just so cool um i put what you were talking about on the screen here it'll also be in the show notes um it's on bridget's website that that media starter pack so definitely go check that out um, but I'm curious too, because this whole conversation, like th very good strategy, good tactics, we've kind of honed in on podcasts, but the the topic is PR on a budget, especially a small business budget. So can we unpack that? Like, what should we be expecting as far as a budget? Because that's the next kind of scary hurdle is when you think of those big companies with their PR teams, anytime you say team, that's salaries, which we don't, we don't have PR teams in small businesses. Um, you can do this yourself. And, and let me, let me tell you what we do for PR. It costs us roughly, I, I think $80 a month to both host this podcast, get on all the podcasts we're on and cut up all the clips and post them on social media. So that's some grounding and context, but Bridget, you're the expert. I just, that's just my experience. What do you kind of tell people as, um, as a budget range? Yeah, that's super helpful. There's many different levels to this. Like a business owner can completely do this on their own if they want. We do not do pay to play. We do not promote it. You know, there might be a time and place for that. But this is really about you 
introducing yourself to members of the media, whether it's a podcast host, whether it's a TV producer, the only thing that that takes is your time. So if you are strapped for time, that's where you might start to outsource some of this. So you might look at hiring a VA. We also are doing a VA training program right now because we realize that the founders are busy and we can actually equip the VA with this type of information at a much lower you know, monthly amount than an agency. The agency would be the highest you know, budget because they're going to have you on retainer for about six months to 12 months. And that's going to be anywhere from like three to $10,000 if it's like a huge, huge agency. So it really, again, depends on where you're at in business. Do you want to work with an agency where, you know, you go in, you tell them what you want. They have some of the contacts with the media. Maybe that's your budget. Like you can go for it. Maybe it's just you right now. You have a small team and you have a little time to set aside in the mornings for you to send out these pitches, for you to see what's going on in the media world. Twitter and LinkedIn are great places to connect with writers of publications because they'll make these you know, media queries where they're like, hey, I need, you know, I need a source for uh, an article I'm doing on home renovations. I need an interior designer. So you can start to get into that world. And then I would say that middle ground is like hiring a VA or someone to do some of this for you. There are, you know, platforms like Quoted. There's a lot of different platforms that are now charging you a monthly amount where the media comes to you. So I think it's really about what time do you have? What budget do you have? But just know there's like a range of money that you can be spending depending, I think, on time constraints and obviously budget constraints. Yeah, those are great tips. And, you know, for for our clients, they're typically in the seven, eight figure range. They have a team, five to anywhere to 50 employees. Um, someone on your team can do this. If you kind of sit down and you guys do it together, like you you brainstorm, what is our, our media message? What are we offering? What's our lead magnet or where are we sending people? That kind of stuff. And then what's the customer journey? Like Bridget said, you can have you can build a process around this and then automate it with someone on your team. And then outsource it to a VA or, or whatever, or scale accordingly. But yeah, that's that's just my personal opinion. I don't really like when people go all in from, you know, zero to ten thousand dollars a month on an agency because you don't even know what's working. Um, so I I just love the idea of get out there, put your message out there, see what's working, and then pay the experts, and then see see where it goes from there. Just get better at it. So Bridget, this was a, a phenomenal conversation. Thank you for coming. Um, I have two last questions though. One is I, I'm curious, you're, you're obviously entrenched in this world. You love it. I can sense your passion. What's like, what's cool going on in your company right now that we need to pay attention to? Mm, we are loving hosting events. Like our, our big pillars of our own business are around community and fun. So we've hosted community events, networking events, PR related events. We really just want to bring the business owners together because that's honestly what just lights us up. We love teaching and talking about PR, but like bringing the humans together who are on that like-minded path. They want to grow. They want to evolve. They want to learn from each other. And we like to bring together a diverse group of business owners because we like to serve a diverse group of business owners too. And I feel like we learn the best when we're with like completely different industries because you're like wow that's incredible like how do you do that yeah we we tend to get so pigeonholed in our in our thinking right if we just spend time in our industry i love that that's fantastic um and then the last question is a question about a question so everything we do if you're watching you see it behind me it's an upside down question mark our whole business strategy comes on just asking better questions to get better results so around this topic pr on a small business budget what is one question you would give to the listener to get them thinking and maybe get a better answer about how they can leverage this strategy to grow their business. Mm. Yeah, I'll bring it back to topic. Um, what is something that you are naturally passionate about and the media wants to know more about? So what's newsworthy, what's timely, what's relevant and what's interesting and start from there. That's fantastic. Well, I'm going to answer the question. Mine is, uh, cutting grass and it's springtime. So maybe that's relevant. It has absolutely nothing to do with what I'm good and what I get paid for, but that's what I'm passionate about. So that's probably a really bad answer to that question. So <laughs> well, if you were a lawn, <laughs> if you were a landscaping expert or like landscaping design, it is springtime. So that would be a great topic to bring to the media, but I don't know if you want media attention for that. <laughs> no, I really don't. I just want uh, attention from the other, my neighbors around me to know that I have <laughs> The best lawn but anyway yes landscapers that's our gift to you so bridget thank you so much for coming this was an awesome conversation thanks brandon
And wherever you are watching or listening, first of all, thank you. Second of all, subscribe. Make sure you don't miss a minute of this daily madness that is this show. And you keep tuning in to every single episode of Harmonious at Lunch. We'll see you on the next episode.